Henry looked pretty good at practice. Uh, did he look good? To he you? did. He looked. Henry looked great. Um, it's just a matter of strength and making sure we uh, put him in a, give him the time to get back to strength. I think. Uh, but he he looked great. It, the concern, only concern going forward, would be how fast he may fatigue. Um, but uh, I was happy with the first day. He skated hard with, you know, in his rehab skates and certainly had no problem with the pace today. Would he be a possibility for later next week? He, he would be. He's not going to play the next game. But, um, you know, I, we'll see how he responds to this skate. And uh, tomorrow will be a longer skate or more. And we'll have a much better indication tomorrow. And, but but it won't be in New York. I can't imagine putting them in New York. It would be that'd be a really positive change. But uh, I'll talk to the trainers and doctors, and as we progress here over the next few days. But now that he's in practice, uh, he you know it usually takes a guy three to two to two to four practices at most before they get back going because they've had so many skates beforehand. So. Robert Haig wasn't on the ice. He's not on the injury report. Was it just a precaution? <clears throat> Yeah, maintenance today. Yeah, so he'll be full go tomorrow. Practice. As far as Miller, um, it seemed like took a pretty big hit. Uh, he just I guess he obviously felt well enough today. He has. He felt he felt fine. Uh, they put him in, you know, the protocol. They pulled him from the bench because of where he got hit. Uh, looked like he stumbled before the hit, which left himself more exposed uh, when he was going back. If you look at the end zone replay. You can see him trip up before he takes the hit, so he couldn't defend himself as well. Um, so yeah, but he's he's fine, and what he skated did, fine today too. What did you think about that hit? Because of maybe the stumble, maybe a little worse than it was. But well, yeah, you know, I, I I don't like it when our guys, um, you know, I want our guys to be able to defend themselves. He did trip up on that, um, but obviously your guy gets hit like that, you don't like it. I'll leave it at that. I mean. No one likes that. Don, when you sleep on that game last night and look at the tape again, is it pretty much what you thought? Did anything stand out that yeah. surprised you? You know, you look at the tape and it's one of those games you want to forget, but you know you have to remember. You know, you just, you, you, you want to get rid of it, but there's lessons in there to be, to be learned. And I think I mentioned it last night, uh, you review it. If, if, if you go back and watch the first 40 seconds of that game, both teams, it, it's kind of indicative of the night. There is 11 changes of possession in the first 40 seconds before a team, either one, us or them, could actually get it into the offensive zone. It took 40 seconds and 11 changes of possession. And you don't see that in an NHL game. Uh, so my point in that was that was really an indicator of um, we did nothing to wear on the other team getting a puck behind him. We played the game in front of him, I think, as I said last night. I think I said that. Too much in front of him. They are a good team. That, they like to keep a tight gap, and it's easy to – if you keep playing in front of them, they can contain you. You're helping them contain you. Um, and we just, for whatever reason, we didn't maybe we didn't feel like we had the legs to go pursue, um, was what it looked like to me. We, we looked lethargic, and we played lethargic. And um, – you know, I don't want to go so far as to say we were lazy and we didn't work. I, mean, I think we were trying. Um, based on our guys' history, they didn't look like themselves. Uh, but clearly we did not do anything to wear on them. They started doing stuff after the first 40 seconds to start to wear on us. And at some point in the NHL, there's a breaking point. And they had four consecutive goals and four consecutive scoring chances. And you, you guys watch these games. At some point, there's a breaking point in these games. And, and it's like 70% of the NHL games is one team wears the other one out, and then it's boom, 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 and game over. And, uh, again, we had, we had no attention to, to wearing another team out. And we, we, in the process, wore ourselves out. What's the balance for you when you look at a certain, you get to certain crisis points in a season, now you have five games in seven days. As the head coach, what's the balance between reinforcing – what you want them to do, the things you've been working on all year, mm -hmm. and making changes and shuffling things up. Yeah, you know, we, we did consider sh shuffling lines up. Uh, and I mentioned that in the third period. It didn't do us any good. Uh, so I went right back. I mean, it was, could have been worse. And it just shows you they weren't, they weren't on their game. They weren't in it. 
Um, we, what I feel we need right now, Mike, is uh, to, to just what I just said. We, if, if we want to get to our game and what you maybe see us working on in practice, you don't just go out and do that. You don't, you don't get a meeting with the other team and say, hey, let us do this. And it was almost as if we, we played that way. And you've got to wear the other wear on the other team, and then you can get to your game and how you want to play. Your style, your identity, will show. But if you don't do anything to wear the other wear on the other team a little bit, uh, make them go. I mean, the old you can throw all the cliches out. Make them go back for pucks and play 200 feet, put pucks behind them, get a four check going. You know, those those are cliches because those are those are things you need to do. Um, and we didn't do much of that. We didn't even put, you know, even putting pucks to net. I don't know what our shot count was through 10 minutes, but it wasn't enough. And so when you don't have, when you're not putting pucks to net, you don't have a focus on that. Your focus is left and right, not direct. And the consequences are obvious from that point. So, uh, and they were last night. So we have to get back to that. We have to get to that. Then we can get to our game, if that makes sense. Tells you they were refocused today, or were they refocused today? You well, you, you know, I don't know if they were refocused today yet. Um, you know, it's we played last night. You practiced this morning. We we had a quick short meeting. We didn't do a lot, and today was more about getting them back moving. Um, and then tomorrow will, I think tomorrow will be a big day. I think they'll feel much better tomorrow. Um, I didn't want to change any mood today at all. Let them think about it and soak it in and. Um, just short work here, like I said, a real short meeting just with intent and then practice with some intent. We did some different drills today. Just I uh, didn't want them doing the same thing. Um, there were a couple just for familiarity to make the practice move a little bit or get a flow going, but uh, then we switched up drills. So, um, But tomorrow I think is when you sort of move on past this. It's uh, If you didn't have a game, you played the next. Some, sometimes those nights when you play a game like that, it's nice to have a game the next night. Uh, but for us, I think we should think about that for a little bit. And how important does that make this, the, How important does the schedule make tomorrow? I mean, you're not going to have any real practice time here in the next week. Past tomorrow. Yeah, it, it uh, you know all our practice for us are important. So tomorrow is a big one. But the schedule, you know, I also do feel there's the bulk of games is is good. Like I said, you could. After something like last night, you can get right to the next night play, which we saw a lot last year in back-to-back -back games. You know, you can make adjustments right away, and you're, you're instead of you're practicing them, you're saying, okay, this adjustment has to happen tonight in the game. And there's, you know, so you just, it's it's completely different because you're playing the game and not practicing, but but uh, it's equally and sometimes even better to do that. So I'm fine with that. I think I'm not concern with the bulk of games and not practice I think you can do things and make improvements and target within the next game so it's fine with us welcome and I think the, the only thing you worry about is injuries you don't have any time to uh, if, if that happens when you play that many in short time Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.